and welcome back to the Remedial Film Class Podcast Fall Break Edition. Today we take George kicking and screaming into the depths of hell. Jason goes to hell, but George is going to go there too because we made him watch the movie. <laughs> ah. How's it going tonight, George? I'm going to hell. How's it going, Travis? Uh, help, help me. Uh, help me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck in a nutshell. I'm g- as always, I'm Dan, your noble host. <laughs> in, in question form, <laughs> and I'm uh, Travis. And I'm George. Uh, George knows who he is. He's very confident. I might be. <laughs> 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 uh, well, as we've been doing with the uh, the full run through the Jason lore, notice we've left the Friday the 13th behind, and now we're just in Jason movies. We usually like to start things off with your notes. George, you got any notes? A few. He's got one. <laughs> not, not many. <laughs> but uh, I did. I, I wrote some stuff down. Hit me with um, your notes. All right. So the it's it started out really good. Um, uh, the the opening scene with the ch- the chick and the and the bathroom and the shower scene and the camera going back and forth uh, mm. over the mirror and. You know, you're expecting he's learning something to pop up he's in the learning. mirror, but they didn't pay right. it off. That was great. <laughs> I like that. And then, like, all downhill from there, it was like, what the f? What I hate what they did with the story. I, I was like, <sighs> it's what you asked for. It looks no, it's not. <laughs> it is not what I asked for. I, I was smirking last. Uh, one when you're talking about well you know I have been you making, start talking about being an entity and all this stuff I'm like well maybe I've been no. I've been making a <laughs> shit eating grin since about part four mm. when George started <laughs> introducing this idea that maybe Jason jumps from one body yeah, to another yeah. and I'm like yeah he does <laughs> yeah he does <laughs> maybe maybe he becomes like a spirit that spreads and and go- I'm like yeah tell me more <laughs> tell me more about it George. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they didn't do it well, man. Oh, man, they just didn't. They gave do it you right. everything you wanted. No, oh, <laughs> just terrible. So that's my notes. I literally have some notes about the beginning, and then Jason gets blown up, and I just wrote what the f, and then wow, I hate what they did with the story, and that was it. So, I don't know what happened, but our official Twitter account earlier tonight said that. Travis and I were about to serve George with a big old heaping spoon of be careful what you wish for. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I yeah. don't know what that was about. I'll have to ask the guy that does our Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> they were listening. So they I'm a listening. big fan of this movie, it turns out. I thought I hated it. Right. Because I, and maybe it is just, you know, the swaying pendulum of expectations but i i know that i've seen this movie a lot and i never really come out fully satisfied but today my expectations were just low enough (laughs) i actually really enjoyed it i i was taking notes as i went like oh 17 minutes in i still like it i think i got to about 36 minutes before the shaving scene and i was like okay this i don't need this like (laughs) this has no bear this is just here for shock value but like it's not that i don't know and everyone who worked in the diner didn't need any of them either. Mm. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what I what I wrote was uh, first sequence was perfect. Then dot dot dot. <laughs> he eats the heart. All downhill from there. Uh, yep. So uh, here's my favorite part about this movie. The first shot of the movie is an establishing shot at a lake, and that's the last time you see any water in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> they shot yeah. this movie completely devoid of a lake and then we're like oh crap we need to have a lake in here and so they took a picture of a lake for five seconds and splashed at the beginning of the movie mm. camp crystal lake holy moly i didn't realize that holy there moly. even a friggin' lake i didn't realize it because the opening was so solid that i never even really noticed the fact that there was no lake like, I guess because he left the lake in the last movie, I really wasn't paying attention to that at all. But there was a lake at the end. Was Not. there? They were in the woods. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. They keep going to the woods. Even the house, the cabin at the beginning, appears to be on like a hillside. <laughs> so it's right. like 
where it's like it would save money they went to Tennessee and <laughs> filmed like what are they doing here but i don't yeah, mind I, I mean whatever the, i mean this movie if if the absence of a body of water is the worst sin this movie commits i think i'll forgive it yeah oh I, there I, are I'd, worse i do no, it's, <laughs> it's perfect you know i i did i did think to myself towards the end of the movie i thought you know at least this plot is Different. like it, it comes full circle like it does you know it's not there's no plot holes it's a tight plot you know <laughs> i i hate it um but you know it it works you know I, I, look at him trying to polish a turd no i really hate it it's, no, I it's hear you. really terrible we're going to polish that turd i don't know man it. can we talk about how awesome the fbi slash us marshals slash us special forces slash <laughs> undercover stripper brigade like how yeah. how tight a uh, coalition those teams all made it was good shit it was good shit to yeah. blow up jason fucking Voorhees. can we call him that now <laughs> i feel like we have to i what's funny is back then cuz i i remember when before this movie came out after 8 happened and then 9 happened people were starting like monologues on late night and everything people were just saying why don't they just blow him the hell up chop them in little pieces and send them in different areas and different boxes. So I think that beginning was like an answer to that, that it doesn't matter hmm. if we chop him up. He's he's kind of like the, the wolf man in Monster Squad, where it doesn't matter what you do, he's going to pull it, pull it back together. It's a heck so, of a dynamic beginning. Uh, yeah, I, I loved it. I, from what I heard, it was a not a reshoot, but like an afterthought. Like they, they filmed that last like that was like one of the last things that I don't even know if the director was involved in it. Which part? The beginning, like the, the very, very beginning. Yeah, the stuff that kind of was true Jason type stuff. Yeah, but I have heard that. Yeah, the, the development of this movie was very much like a guy's first like film without anybody watching him, and then when they saw yeah. the results, they were like, "Oh, and now we're gonna add <laughs> a yeah. bunch of things, and it's all our favorite parts of the movie or the stuff they added later." Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they went in and they 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 uh they snidered it. They basically realized, okay, we're gonna change what you've done just a bit, but the opposite direction because I think Snyder yeah. would have done a better job. Well, no, what they did with Snyder is after he had to leave the project, they went in and made a bunch of changes. They weedened him. Yeah, they weedened him. That's right. Ugh. 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 <laughs> Now they're saying Justice League 2. Why don't we just finish the first one before yeah. we start making promises? Let's make Justice League 1 first. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Holy <laughs> moly. So you have the insane ambush at the beginning, which I think we can all agree was cool. Like there was no yeah. downside to 100 squibs and machine gun fire and all that stuff. Can we talk about how brave Richard Gant is as an actor? I mean... He doesn't just eat the heart. He goes full blue Valentine on that heart. I mean, he goes all in. <laughs> <laughs> in. In the middle of a great montage, opening credit montage. Like I think they spent more money on the opening credit montage than they spent on. That was annoying as shit. Movie. Oh, I know. It was. <laughs> so Would have annoying. been nice if we could have moved some of that budget over into the instrumentation for that music. What do you guys think? Yeah. Oh my god, it was terrible. Do, 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 do. Although effects wise, it was fine. Oh hell yeah, K and B all over this movie. Look, it looked amazing, but it's just ugh. And it's a beneficiary of the fact that they actually knew they were going to do an unrated cut, so they actually put effort into the effects and shot them in their full glory. And then edited it. I'm all for that. Yeah, most of the effects were good. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, given the narrative uh, structure of this film, we'd better stick to the order of events. We can't get out of order. We'll lose our... Pl- what do you want to talk about? Yeah. What's your favorite effect? George, what was your favorite effect? <laughs> My absolute favorite effect, and I'm not even being sarcastic, just kidding, I am being sarcastic, was whatever the fuck came out of that guy's <laughs> neck. <laughs> oh, when he was growling like and, a lion. And into that chick's crotchal area. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that he, neck. There was a lot of neck action in this movie. But he, yeah. Uh, he, that that creature. He went Richard Grant on her. <laughs> oh, man. <The> cre- yeah. <laughs> Do you know they didn't tell that actress, that name actress, that famous actress, that they were going to shoot that scene? Wow. So she didn't find out till she saw the movie. That She's she, so classy, too. I can't imagine oh, that really happening. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Like that's but for real though, uh, my favorite effect. Uh, I don't have one. There's like ten effects in this movie that are out of this world. But the, oh. the tent scene, holy shit! Yes, good shit. Holy there. shit! Yeah, that was. I was. That yeah. might have been my actual favorite though. That was they really were like. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh, Jim Cameron did this with CGI. We're gonna do it with just practical. Yeah. We're just gonna do this. Who did the effects on this movie? Greg Nicotero. And his crew. Okay. Yeah. Can yeah. you tell? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like when they did a melting guy. That's my favorite one. Is the melting cop. Like when he finally, when the entity left his body and he just decayed in a in a matter of seconds. Yeah. That was pretty sweet. Yeah. Stuck to the floor like flypaper. Yeah. I'm, I was. Yeah, I love that. Greg Nicotero. A few episodes back, I referenced when we were talking about Nicotero that he kept one of the effects and made it into a speaker stand. <laughs> yeah. Tent chick. Is a speaker stand now. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. it, it is an amazing rack. So it is. <sighs> All right. Good night. Got to cut that out too. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> so they get to the uh, the morgue, right? Richard Gant is now your first non hockey mask, actual human. Uh, Jason Voorhees in quite a while Mm. and the writer of the movie Dean (laughs) Laurie comes in and gives some of my favorite monologue in any Jason movie (laughs) hey you fuck hey you (laughs) fat ass magnet blown up fuck yeah suck this suck it suck it we've been able to do that monologue since about fifth grade me and my buddies we loved this movie as kids And that effect when he gets pulled up like a waffle. (sighs) Yeah. Still gross. How come all the coroners like eat while they're working in these movies? Because you got to eat. Because it's funny. Not while you're working, man. You don't have to bring a pizza into the. I eat at my desk. And the other guy on the couple movies ago is like just like chowing on a sandwich. (laughs) There's one movie. I don't know which one it is, but the like actual piece of the sandwich falls (laughs) on the body and he like picks it up and puts it in his mouth. I can't remember what movie it is, but it's like, let's take it to the next step. (laughs) It's almost to the point that if you don't have someone eating in the morgue, are you even doing a morgue scene? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) It's like a trope now. So a little cameo in the movie, the uh, burly looking security guard that calls Jason yes. the P word. You remember that part, George? Mm hmm. That's the Kane Hodder. You're Jason. What? That's yeah. Jason. Cool. Yeah. A lot of swagger. That's cool. They gave him a little nod. I like it. I love that cut, too, where they go from him insulting Jason to the <laughs> footage on the news magazine show. <laughs> like the, yeah. the like hard Jason copy is or dead. the. Inside Edition version of, yeah, really good. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah, that was that was a good cut. I did like that. All right, so I guess we're going to talk about the elephant in the room. Which is? Uh, what, what do you call him, Dan? Creighton fucking Duke. Creighton is Duke, it? man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I liked him. And I remember back when I saw this in the 90s that I liked him, but I was mad that he was kind of boring. Like, he didn't do enough. He was kind of just there, and he didn't. And then I realized when I was watching it recently, I caught up to my 45-year-old self and realized that they wasted him. He he could have been, I don't know, they, ke- they kept using him to explain stuff, but... To me, it would have been better if he was more like a, a Van Helsing character or, you know, even Dr. Loomis. Or yeah. Django. Or Django. <laughs> well, I was thinking... <laughs> this is what he reminded me of. He just I was thinking, <laughs> drags around a minigun in a coffin all the time. <laughs> he's dressed like uh, Franco Nero. I mean, why not? Actually, he's right. dressed kind of like The Undertaker, which is hilarious. Yeah, a little bit. Rest but I... Um, 
I even thought that that would have been a good casting to bring back the Tommy Jarvis character and have him like be full circle. Now he's totally obsessed with Jason to the point where he knows his whole history, family history, all the stuff. He's almost like a Van Helsing character, but it's Tommy Jarvis. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. They to me that would have been way yeah, more. Well, Tommy Jarvis should have been Jason in episode yeah five, but so. obviously they didn't go that way. But yeah, I, I I like the character, but I think he, his connection to Jason was very m muddy, and they didn't really spend a lot of time. Obviously, they didn't spend a lot of time on any of the script. But with that character, they spent a lot of time introducing him and making him important, and then they just didn't give him what I, he should have been. My understanding is they basically took like a script, a spec script for a body swapping slasher movie. And then got mm. the license, and we're like, "Oh, hey, we're gonna make this a Jason movie." And they just didn't get far enough into, like, pre-doing the script, to be like, "Oh, hey, this guy, we could just make it this other guy that already exists." <laughs> you know, one more pass on the script, I think you end up with Tommy Jarvis there. But yeah, Creighton Duke's kind of cool. Stephen Williams well, is awesome. Yeah, I heard that the they were gonna. Who's the main male character? John Lemay, Stephen. Yeah, I th I heard that that was going to be Tommy Jarvis at some point, but I'm like, why? He's he would be much older. He would be a better Van Helsing, like older character, kind of tying it all together. But I did like Creighton Duke. I thought he was cool. Y you might need to explain to me what Van Helsing is. Oh, uh, Dracula's nemesis. Basically, the the monster hunter of the classic movies. Okay. Like, like Dr. Loomis he's the, in Halloween. Yeah, he's like the Joker to the Batman. Yeah, I gotcha. But actually, he would be the Batman to the Joker in, in Dracula. Gotcha. Did you guys assume that I'd know that? Yeah. I mean, it, if you've been yeah, to high sorry. school, you should probably have read some literature. You've never read Bram point. Stoker's Dracula? No. Oh, okay. I've never been to high school either. Oh, I know true. what we're watching in season something. Oh, I know we're putting that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, he's a monster hunter. He he's, knows all about monsters. Yeah, he, well, specifically, like, he's... Specifically he's, Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. He knows everything about Dracula. He's the one that knows how to kill Dracula. If you go with the parlance of Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, hmm. which is an awesome takedown of the slasher genre that I hope yes. you watch at some point, he would refer to all these characters as Ahabs, referencing Moby okay. Dick. Moby Dick, right. Okay. So every every monster needs its Ahab. Yes. Gotcha. That would be Van Helsing. Yeah, that would be Tommy Jarvis. Right. Yes. And yes. that's the thing. Or Laurie Strode or whatever. But Stephen Williams is so cool, and I've been singing his praises since we had to watch, I mean, since we loved uh, Blues Brothers. Mm. So now it finally pays off that, hey, that's that guy I was talking about. Yeah. No, I've always liked him. 21 Jump Street, baby. Makes me oh. think about a little girl in a pink dress. <laughs> are we gonna Are we gonna talk about um, the video game at all? Yes, because this would be a good time to bring out bring up the fact that like I was playing the video game the other night with Dan and a bunch of his friends, and I died because yeah, that's, that's what, what you do. That's what counselors do. And to my surprise, I came back as Tommy Jarvis. Nice, and that. That's who it was, right? Yeah, yeah it was, the, yeah, yeah, it was Tommy, Jarvis. Yeah. Tommy Jarvis. I came back with to like as Tommy Jarvis. I had a rifle, and it was like help the counselors kill Jason. And I was like, "What? Apparently, you can like call up Tommy Jarvis, and like he'll come help you take care of Jason." Now, if you give him a few uh, beers, does he become Tommy Jason? <laughs> uh, no. If you're playing on no. a private server, friendly fires on, so anything's nice. possible. Mm. Yeah. One hmm. time, uh, a certain player of ours who might be married to me uh, fri <laughs> friendly fired Tommy Jarvis while they were trying to kill Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so Tommy Jarvis was no more, and then Jason, who I think I was Jason that time, I ran rough shot over all of them. They had like six people around me, but then she she missed me and hit Tommy, and he died. Then they all died. It was great. It's a good game. Yeah, we had a we had a little snafu with the keys because. She didn't know how to drive, and I was trying to teach her how to drive because neither of us knew how to drop the keys <laughs> so that I could pick them up and drive because I uh, knew how to drive. Right. But she had the keys, and we didn't know how to drop them. So it was like item. a real horror movie where you're both standing there 
trying to figure out how to drive <laughs> yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. We had a good time. It was fun. Uh, so you brought up the tent scene, which was cool. Was there a pickle in there? I didn't see a pickle. There's a there's a there's some side I'm, pickle. It's kind of a pickle. I might shadow have, of a pickle. I might have been distracted. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't see any pickle at all. No, the pickle comes earlier actually. It's before they go into the tent. I just noticed it today for the first time because uh I don't know if yeah, it's it was the Blu-ray the, or if I was looking for in. it cuz I I heard the funny stories about angry pickles, but before yeah. they go in, you get a you get a pretty clear shot of some pickle. So kind of like a a David Naughton type pickle. I don't Ameri- know what I don't American know what David we- Naughton's yeah. pickle looks like. Par- American Wear of London, he kinda was running after he was in the zoo. He put the balloons on. Do you ever uh, an American <laughs> yeah, rem- naked naked yeah, American rem- man stole my balloons? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he put it over his pickle. I never saw his pickle either. I thought you saw his pickle. You're gonna have to replay these movies, guys. Find those pickles. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna Find have to go pickles. back and pickle hunt. <laughs> it's a pickle hunt. It's like a where's Waldo, but a little <laughs> bit more <laughs> without the stripes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, it's a candy cane. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's right. the the tent scene is the one where those two actors actually had dated previously. So yeah, if it looked shit. real, it's because it, uh, you know. Yeah, there was some chemistry there. Mm. I felt like I was actually there. <laughs> 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 oh man, I think we, we have about out too, yeah right? we have about <laughs> five minutes of usable material so far. <laughs> <laughs> Good, because my wife's listening. <laughs> so, uh, so the diner. So is my youth group. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh. the diner, Joey B's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the wait staff all wear the same uniforms as the diner staff in part five. So I don't know if they're trying to reach for that or if that is literally like number one prop department for yeah. diner yeah. outfits. But the it's showtime, lady. Same clothes as the crew in here that all get murdered. Huh. So that's kind of fun if they did that on purpose. And it's a happy accident if they didn't. Hmm. Yeah, and I don't think they didn't need them. I mean, they needed a body count, but they were kind of interesting. Yeah, I wasn't saying that they they weren't needed. I thought that their Yeah, I mean the way they were was very, you know, reminded me of the hillbillies from you know, the mother and son yeah. hillbillies from the other episode. Well, well, they were going that route of, of, uh, you know, the it was just family like, member there's always of these, Jason. There's always these, like, quirky characters in these yeah. movies that are just, like, too quirky. Well, they do that backwoods, like, Virginia mountains, like. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah. come on. Like, it's either someone, so it's either someone running around saying you're doomed or, like, hillbillies just going over the top acting like hillbillies hillbillying for the people in the back row <laughs> the back now <laughs> now george you and travis live in your big fancy city mm-hmm. with your suburbs <laughs> and your street lights and all that stuff Let and me our tell sidewalks you, out here in rural america uh i would actually consider those folks in part nine to be like the batman begins version of the folks in part five like I know the people <laughs> that work at the diner; them. those right. are people I know, and it's not a cartoon. Like they, right? That that was them. Th- that was a pretty fair assessment of some folks I know. I can and they go with making the Aaron Gray character. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't nearly as making fun of people as the part five. Hey y'all! You right, know. right, right, right. Yeah, it, these I guys were Beverly just hillbillies. I mean, have you ever worked at a diner in a I, small town? I, I've been to a not, lot of diners. Not off the highway, but like, like you know. Off the highway. Off the highway. <laughs> small, small town yeah. diner. I mean, no, I don't know get. that it was that cartoonish. And they seem yeah. like nice folks. I like that husband oh, a lot. Nice he cracks me up. Yes. Yeah. The doting husband. <laughs> <laughs> he said a few things. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I was having a problem with all that. Like I was, I, I've said it earlier. Like I didn't like the whole backstory of everything they were trying to kind of crowbar into this movie. So they had to have the diner just so they could talk about uh, the Aaron Green character who's related to Jason. They have the, like that whole sub story. Mm-hmm. So they had to, they had to do that, and they had to run there. They had to put a place to put the baby. But yeah, it was a little much. I mean, in the end, it's their reference puddle because they don't have any bodies of water, so they had to use a right. a diner. <laughs> 
But yeah. if you watch the they TV had a deep cut, fryer. yeah, they did. If you watch a TV <laughs> cut, uh, there is like an extended scene with some really cool like one shot steady cam stuff that Travis would like, mm. showing all the characters interacting in the diner before the story really gets going. Okay, and it makes it feel like okay, yeah, this really is just the point that becomes our point, our uh, Friday Part Two reference puddle. Just that right one waitress middle. was shooting the shotgun. Yes. I think she took out a customer. She did. She <laughs> did absolutely <laughs> take out a customer yeah. when she <laughs> shot Jason. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit, she's just collateral damage. Like he was, and he reacted, so either she really shot him or it was planned. <laughs> but I was <laughs> like, wow. Either there's not blanks in that thing and she really took that guy out because he mean, went with it. We're still trying to find the guy that played Jason. You know, they blew him into so many pieces that we hit. <laughs> No, that he had a squib on his left arm. That customer, so they knew. I mean, that okay. was that was a squib. I don't think they actually shot anyone, Travis. They're not I shooting shotgun not. rounds at Kane Hodder while he's in the costume. I don't know why. Why they wouldn't? He's a stunt guy. <laughs> 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 Just put a vest on him. Yeah, he's always yeah, I, he's ready and willing. <laughs> You're gonna end up in some kind of YouTube fist fight with Kane Hodder over this. Oh, uh, I have a picture of him with my head in his hands, so it's I'd be fine with that. <laughs> He's choking me. Speaking of head and hands, there's an excellent head squish in this one. Yes. Yeah. Just a they gross actually... fountain of goo comes it's out of It's a shame this movie wasn't in 3D. Mm. I really yeah, love but... that whole sequence where she's all tough and javelins him, and then he grabs her and does that, and then boom, with the head. Yeah. That's a cool sequence. This this movie has a lot of cool sequences. Yes. I liked it's it like... a lot, guys. <laughs> it <It's> No. <laughs> It's like a box of your favorite puzzle, but you just it's just a bunch of pieces and once you put it together it's kind of boring. Yeah, it's actually there were some really good things about this movie. Like the beginning scene was fantastic. The effects were were gross. The you know, the the acting wasn't terrible. No. The production was good. I'm and the story go the, just blows. I know why, but I'm not allowed to say it. What? <laughs> The story, but anyways, everything was good except for the story. The story blew. I love the scene though with the two, with the the main guy and the his cop buddy, and they're sitting by the police car, and they're both tired from fighting, and neither one's yeah. all all that tough. And then the one, you're gonna do what I say. Why? Because I've got a gun. Fuck that. I've got, a, got gun. a gun. And then they right. pull <laughs> guns on each other. I mean, that's good. Yeah. That's good movie. That's I it was like straight that. out of a. Kevin Smith there, movie. Yeah, there was a it lot was. of tongue in cheek, <laughs> which I'm fine with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, to me, it's just my I would have probably loved this movie if it wasn't a Jason movie. It it could have been a really good That's a good insight. Yes. Yeah. It 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 could have been a really good movie. Yeah, if it wasn't part 9 of a franchise just there was no Jason. It just departed from <laughs> the the whole story so so much yeah and then and then and then and then and then the other elephant in the room which george wouldn't have caught this because he's not versed try me the friggin necronomicon is in the, the Voorhees house the book of the dead which is from evil dead oh yeah i didn't get that so Boom, right there, dead center. It's not even like on a bookshelf as like an Easter egg. It's he opens it and he leafs through it. So what you're saying it was a little on the nose. It's too much. <laughs> It'd be like if Jason <laughs> took a second and like l- picked up a Michael Myers mask, looked at it, turned his head, <laughs> considered it, yeah, and then put it back. Like it's it was so <laughs> wrong. that is such a featured prop from another franchise. And now the director will argue that this movie is canon with Evil yes. Dead, which, yeah. That's the interview that I saw where he said, yep, Jason's part of the, <laughs> Jason is a deadite. Live with it. That's what he said. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, that was like so blatant. Like, wow. how do you, how do you put one character in another franchise without talking to anybody? <laughs> <laughs> just doing it. I'm just going to do it. Oh, I mean, I it's not so that far removed from trying to get uh, Leatherface mixed in with the Friday franchise. You know, I mean, everybody that writes these movies thinks about yeah. how we can cross over, and it does help that 
I think New Line had access to those props or at least yes. The, so, I mean, but they were already going to push push the try uh, the the crossover with Freddy. What now? To just throw they're going to do what the, now? Yeah, they were going to do what? The crossover with Freddy. Who? What, what are you talking Who's about? Who's Freddy? Uh, at the <laughs> end, at the end of the movie, <laughs> at the end of the movie, there is a little bit of an old glove that comes yes, out of the ground. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. God, we were that obsessed I watched the wrong with movie. that because <laughs> <laughs> I did that before. I'll tell you, in the mid nineties, speaking 90s, of crossovers, yeah, in the mid nineties, we were obsessed with that that ending. We were just like, oh, it has to happen, and oh, New Line God, has yeah. Jason, and New Line already had Freddy, and now. They've got the glove and the thing, and we got to have a cross. And we they wanted Ash in that movie too. They wanted a, a three-way. We only had to wait ten years. Yeah. Who's Ash? From Evil Dead. Yeah. So yeah. They yeah were you guys aren't doing a very good job. Yeah. I still, I still haven't seen shit. This is true. Well, you've uh, you've seen thirteen <laughs> movies. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. How many plus the Jason movie? I don't know, like twenty. Twenty something. Twenty two. I don't do. I don't math. Not this time of night. What do you guys think? Because I have my opinion, but I want to hear yours. Uh, Jason walks in front of a mirror, and he's Jason, even if his body is somebody else. Stupid. Hated it. Dumb. Okay. Hated it. You know what really bugs me about the whole thing? That and the rebirth at the end. Why mm-hmm. does he keep going back to the way he looked at the beginning of the movie? Yes. Great like, question. I get it at the beginning of the movie. We've seen part eight. I can kind of forgive some, you know, that lady was high on heroin. She doesn't know what she saw. So maybe he was just like real burned up by that toxic waste. And now he looks like this. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Why would he look like that in the mirror? That's dumb. He's not a vampire. And why right. would he look like that? I mean, maybe he is a vampire in this one. I don't know. <laughs> but at the end when he's reborn, <laughs> reborn, I mean, is it because she's dead? Does he only get half reborn? Like... I, I I exactly wrote. We finally get Jason back, and he is exactly the same <laughs> as he was in the beginning. And I said, should have been a new iteration iteration since it was a new Voorhees body. Maybe Demon Jason would have been good, uh, like almost like a combination of all eight Jasons. Or what about just the, or Pamela? What about her? Like just she's her as Jason. Yeah, just yeah. a female Jason now. But it's I don't like think a they, totally different Jason. Though. I don't know if they would have gotten Aaron Gray to do that. But that would have been cool. But yeah, it w- even like a combo. Well, if you put a hockey mask on her, it doesn't really matter who it is. But how's the hockey mask like recreated in the new birth? The, you gotta yeah, keep the hockey I know. mask. I don't know. I I was just like I wasn't buying it. He should have looked different. You know what? I think Travis, we should consult our German friends as to what a Jason might look like reborn. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. German friends? They might have some ideas as to what a more enhanced Jason might look like sometime. <laughs> yeah. You know? I know. This, whatever <laughs> he's trying to get at, it's going over my head. I have no idea what's going on. Is it going uber your head? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but even that, well, I guess we can't talk about it because he doesn't watch I mean... Yet, oh, that intentionally went over my head. Great. <laughs> super <laughs> thanks for asking super <laughs> so I got off on a tangent you guys. about how yeah. stupid Jason looks when he comes so Jason he's having the fight where he's actually the in the sheriff deputy body mm. and I just found it to be kind of a sweet bit of Jason justice that he gets stabbed through the heart and then thrown out of a window yes so he throws folks into the window <laughs> But they throw his butt out of the window. That's like a circularity, man. Yeah, they're like, you've done this. The, and it's, it's one of the tropes. So they went opposite. They, t- I, yeah, they turned really it on that. its head, which is exactly <laughs> what people do when they run out of ideas. Is They do a right. trope and then they turn it on its head. <laughs> yeah. They're, that part, though, awesome. where he gets javelined and then spikes the lady on the javelin. I yeah. mean, that's cool as hell. That's a cool scene. And then you get the really cool, like, the the quickly decaying ca- uh, cop, which I love. Melty cop was cool. The melty cop. And then you get the boyfriend? He went from that to the boyfriend, right? The hard copy guy. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I, huh. 
I don't know. Then it kind of had like a Stranger Things kind of feel. Like when I was watching that, I guess because I have that reference now, that's what that whole body jumping thing felt like. But Stranger Things did it way better. And I know you hate Stranger Things. Yeah, I hate Stranger Things too. But at least they did it with more explanation. Can I just say that what I had in mind for my Jason jumping from body to body, it wasn't anything like this. It wasn't a turd magnet? It, it maggot? wasn't <laughs> like the spirit of Jason. It wasn't anything supernatural. Right. It was just like a physical, mental, PTSD type of thing. Mm. And Tommy Jarvis was perfect because he killed Jason and he had this you know Connection. super traumatic experience. Right. And also he liked to make masks and he was into you know that kind of like weird weird stuff. And so like he was predisposed to it. It would have been great just to you know through his mental anguish and his trying to work through this and his PTSD to just give into Snap. it and become Jason. Yeah. Like, no sp- supernatural shit, no, none of that stuff. So really, it's not Jason jumping from body right. to body. I think I explained it before as, like, a mania, which is like a yeah. mental, I don't know. But see, they were listening to the podcast, and they gave you exactly what you asked for. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> this was so f- fucking poorly done. It's terrible. It is bad. There's some real good it's stuff. There's some real questionable stuff. Yeah. It's called Jason Goes to Hell, and you never see that. <laughs> it's also like Jason takes Manhattan when he's there for five minutes. Yeah, it's like, I, I really honestly, because I guess around the same time Spawn came out, and that character does go to hell to get you know, become what he becomes. So it would have been cool to actually see Jason in hell. So he could like crush Satan's head and have brains okay. out of his eyes. I'm going to jump in here real quick though, because the Spawn movie, I don't know if you've watched it in the past. I haven't. 25 years, <laughs> but it's just like the, I mean, it's the same era as this movie. I think it's even yes, yes. new line as well. This is right on the cusp of CGI being, like serviceable for major full frame effects, but we're mm-hmm. still seven years before the matrix. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and mm. spawn is just, it's, it, it's unwatchably bad. The, the effects yes. are terrible. Yes. Same with like the mortal Kombat movie, mm-hmm. especially the second one. There's just sequences in that movie that are unwatchably bad because the CGI is so bad. If you tried to get into a hell with this Jason, it would have been they- worse. No, they didn't have to do fire and brimstone. What they could have done was kind of like uh, just multi-dimensional. The upside down? Have, Jason yeah, like the upside have, down? Have, have him interact with... A demogorgon? <laughs> a, a devil character of some sort that might be human. Like, he doesn't have to... He could have even been Creighton Duke. That would have been kind of sweet. Al Pacino like shows if up. Cre- if Creighton Duke was Satan and he was following along the whole time to make sure that whatever's supposed to happen follows his rule of Jason becoming the ultimate demon. Something Mm. that interacted with hell. Even show maybe Creighton Duke, who we find out is Satan, is interacting with Freddy in some way to kind of connect the ending. I don't know. Just something. They've already gone the extra mile to show supernatural bullshit. Why not just commit and really give that character? Because I'm not saying Spawn in the way of like do what Spawn did, but the character of Spawn, just like you know a movie like Crossroads or whatever, like you make a deal with Satan, and mm. that's that's it. Doesn't have to be flames and demons and you know bodies swirling in in brimstone, but actually just show the damned soul of Jason and why he's in hell and why he is who he is and how he became who he is. Introduce the demon jumping somehow that way, but show us hell. That's the way I look at it. It doesn't have to be fire. Yeah. It just could be, like you said, Mortal Kombat. The parts in Mortal Kombat that were good were the ones where they were, you know, in the fight scenes that weren't in hell. Like they were in real life. It was just kind of had like a, 
restrictive imprisonment feel. So we need to put Jason into hell, but the hell needs to look more like the real life we just took him out of? No. Yes. Just dank. Could look like a dank. Just no color or whatever. It doesn't I'm just saying not not that terrible nineties flames. God, the nineties flames. Horrible. What were you guys doing in the nineties? <laughs> they were trying. They were trying. But it never worked. It but it'll... there's plenty of movies from like the seventies and eighties where they show some remnants of hell where maybe people are just I mean, Beetlejuice did it. It didn't have to be fire. They show mm. purgatory. They show just it just shows despair and it shows uh, a lack of hope. You can do that without fire. I think this movie had about ninety minutes of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Touche. They did also have Smokey the Bear show up. If you're keeping track, that's the second Smokey the Bear reference in the Friday <laughs> movies. Camping? Did they have Smokey the Bear? There's camping? a sign, only you can prevent forest fires. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, hmm. I know. I, I was just like, hey, Smokey the Bear. Oh, part six, <laughs> part nine. I guess he has to show up again in part 12. We will see, won't we? Hmm. <laughs> we sure hmm. will. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just a backhanded girls night out reference. Anybody? Maybe. Haven't seen <laughs> you haven't seen that one? No. I didn't uh, think so. You got to see it. It's good. <laughs> I'll send it to you at some point. Wait, which one is that? I might have seen it. Uh it's called The Scare Maker or Girls Night Out. It has the girl from part 2 that really wants to get with Mark. I don't Lauren I think is maybe uh, her real name. I don't know. The the girl yes. that wants to get with Mark from Friday 2 is also in Girls Night Out. And uh, okay. there, there's some connections there that we can't go into until you watch the movie. Okay. But all I have is the DVD. If it ever comes out on blue, I'll send you my DVD. Alrighty. Yeah. Was anybody else excited about seeing the Jim Henson puppet arms from hell? <laughs> How bad were they? I mean, I was okay. singing the Meet the Feebles theme the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching this. I'm like, is this a episode of Fraggle Rock? Like, what is going on with yeah. these hands? I don't know if Nicotero had to do with those. They were terrible. They look like you know how when you when you were a kid and you wore like cotton mittens or whatever the the out in the snow and you got these clumps of snow on your on your gloves where you couldn't even use your fingers anymore. They were just all, all frozen together. That's what those hands look like. They were like big Michelin man. Like, why aren't they demon hands? So are you why telling me that they... Hell can't put his arms down? <laughs> <laughs> can't put me, can't get me out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no wonder everybody's so grumpy down there. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. <laughs> you finally get Jason again, and then he's fighting Muppet Like, arms. what was that supposed to be? And not very successfully. He doesn't even put up a fight. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing... You know, Jason confused it first and then start chopping those things up with machetes and pieces mm-hmm. flying all over, and eventually they get him. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it was budget reasons. He has a damn machete, and he's being pulled underground by what looks like tree roots. Yes. Well, and he, not even good tree roots, like like ginseng moss, roots. Mossy ones. <laughs> he had like the ginseng. angry lightning, like, snot bubbles coming out of him and going into him, and the oranges and the whites. Yeah. And, it was very questionable. Now, have, I don't, uh, can I reference this? Did you see Ghost? No. Okay. They handle the demon thing ten times better, and it's not even a horror movie. Like, to me, I don't understand why you're a horror movie. You have Greg Nicotero, who can <laughs> make anything, <laughs> and you don't have these creatures coming out of the ground and pulling him down or like having an all-out battle. But can you make like anything... Greg Nicotero, uh, can you make anything for five dollars? They had a budget, eight didn't they? dollars. I don't know. I don't know how he put his name on that thing. Those 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 Muppet hands. Oh, you know how he put his name on it was that tent scene. Once he got that's that, true. he's he stamped his <laughs> ticket to the next level because that's an insane shot. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much it. And the head squish and the javelin late. I mean, there there were some good effects in this movie. The one that gets cut out of the current Blu-ray that. I guess I get a replacement disc for <laughs> the hand break of the kid. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is not on the current Blu-ray that they just released. So they got to fix it. Why I isn't it? They just goofed up. Oh, okay. It'll I be on say, there. It's in what month. I have, but I love 
when he puts the gun in his belt like a like a bad A, and his mom's like, "Watch your willy." <laughs> <laughs> Mom takes the gun Mom. back out. Jeez, <sighs> uh. <laughs> it's a good movie. I mean, it's a bad movie, but it's a fun. It's a fun it's bad a good, movie. A good bad movie. It's sad that our franchise that we so love has suddenly hit this level that like we're making good bad movies <coughs> instead of bad good movies. Like we've crossed that line now. But it's sad when you when when you can sit here and within five minutes come up with a better story. That's what that that's what bothered me the most. So I'm like, why aren't they spending the time on these scripts? If they're gonna spend the money on a movie, why aren't they spending the time? To write a good movie. It just doesn't make sense to me. Well, it's because they already wrote a decent movie. And if they paid to rewrite a decent movie to a good movie, they'd spend more money. Maybe it's because most of the people that watch these movies all work in diners. Or they're going to give them their money anyway. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these movies do just make their money in the opening weekend before the word of mouth spreads. And then drop off the next weekend and disappear to video. So, I mean, yeah. I like it, man. I didn't think I would. I probably wouldn't watch it again tonight. You know, it's right. It's not one you can double up quick, but the next time around, I'll probably hate it because I'll remember liking it this time. But for <laughs> now, until the next time I watch it, I like part nine. It's fun. Back when I first saw it, it was not watchable. But recently uh, watching it, I'm like, eh. And I don't know if it's because I know that Nothing else really comes after that. But what? I, don't know. I mean, on account does, of the does spike. Does eventually. Hmm. Does eventually. Well, you get ten, but and then that's pretty much it. Then you yeah. get Fre- Freddy versus Jason and the remake are amazing compared to this. But you know, after after nine, there real there's one more movie and that's it. I thought there was. They do Jason X, one. which is 10. Right, 10. And then 11 is Freddy vs. Jason. Uh-huh. And then the remake. You mean they didn't make 13 of these movies? Mm-mm. No, Halloween no. is going to have 13 movies in its franchise before, before this one does, <laughs> unless something <laughs> miraculous happens. Wow. Yeah. So I only have one movie left? In the main and canon. It's, it's and actually, officially, I mean, really, <laughs> one through eight are the original canon. Yeah. This one and Jason X, notice it's Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X because they didn't actually, New Line didn't buy the rights to the Friday the 13th franchise. They just bought the character Jason. Mm. And that kind of leads to all these kind of misadventures in, in weird places. And Did you notice they misspelled the last name on the mailbox <laughs> at the Voorhees house? <laughs> Maybe mm. it's a different Voorhees house and it's just coincidence that the two families have similar names, like Green yeah. with... No E and green with an E at mm. the end, it, you know? It's the house of Mason Voorhees. Yeah, exactly. It's the guy from part two. <laughs> Rest in peace, guy from part two. Although that explains the uh, the healed up shoulder, like the immediately healed shoulder. Sure. He just jumped to a different body. That's all. That is true. Be a lot easier if you just had two guys to begin with, though. Yeah. Yeah, but they the, see Jason jumps from body to body though. Well, he does now. <laughs> she, she it's not really a jump so much it is like a like a possesses. I, it I mean, but there's like a he there's shits a very out his mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, even, they didn't even get that right. Like, you know, like with Alien, the, you actually had a cool way. Right. The exit. That you know, well, the entrance and the exit. And the exit, yeah. You know, you actually had a cool thing that happens. This is like South Park where this they is like, shit I'm out gonna, their mouths. I'm going to shit <laughs> out of my mouth into your mouth. It's like, uh, ah, <laughs> Black goo <laughs> that the coroner can't identify. And that's going to turn you into Jason. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, whoever this entity gets into, their blood turns black. Like, they don't have red blood anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're just filled with black goo now. Black goo. Jason never had black goo Mm-mm. in any of the previous None. movies, though. Not even when he was Which is curious, but I can look Jason. past it because I work in a diner. <laughs> 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 oh, man. <laughs> Five minutes of usable material. 
sorry to everyone who works in a diner. Said so George. Yes, sir. You've gone to hell with our friend Jason. I mean, allegedly. He's under yeah. the ground at least, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Where do we go from here? Where should we go? Where will oh. they go? Where should we I'm go? Yeah, hell. Oh. Where where should we go from here? I'm well. going to say body jumping. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we should go <laughs> to immediately the next movie should be, which I know it's not, Freddy versus Jason. You would think. That's where we should go. They tried. But I know that that's not going to happen because cause I know it. <laughs> but um, where are they going next? I don't know. I'm real excited to find out, though. <laughs> you should it's be. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ooh, woo-wee. It's definitely a fun movie. Now, one thing, if you have some free time, George, because I know uh, we all have an abundance of free time. Oh, yeah, a ton of it, yeah. There is a book called Slash of the Titans by Dustin McNeil, and it is The Road to Freddy vs. Jason. And he covers basically everything that happens between what we just watched and Freddy vs. Jason, the movie we actually get released in theaters. Oh, like everything that was happening in real life, all the politics of the movie making yes. business and such? in-depth yeah, analysis cool. of all the different spec scripts, all the different weird ideas they had. I remember being, I was in like sixth grade, so this would have been 97-ish. Uh, mm. We all knew it was coming, and I could find spec scripts. It was the first time I was ever finding scripts online and be able to read through all these bonkers ideas. And, you know, you get older, you forget about these things. I read the book, and I'm like, oh, my God, that was a real script. <laughs> like, for real, <laughs> I thought I had just read, like, garbage some idiot had put online. No, no, that was an actual <laughs> spec script that was considered, holy moly, we dodged some bullets with that one. It's really interesting. <laughs> it looks like it's pretty cheap on Kindle right now. So, I mean, if you're that kind, of, I love that kind of stuff. It's a really, I remember, it's a great read. I remember finding the a script at the mall. Cherry Hill Mall had a convention, and they had a this guy had a box of scripts, and I bought like Alien Three, and I bought Revenge of the Jedi, and Freddy vs. Jason. I don't know what version it was. I don't think it was the one we watched. We'll try to find that somewhere because I'd like to read that. But I remember it being bad. Yeah. One thing I found from reading that book is, spoiler alert, the movie we got was really the best of all possible scenarios. <laughs> like, Oof. They had some really low ideas there. But Dustin McNeil is the same author that did Taking Shape, the book that I quoted from in our Halloween episode. So mm. I guess that guy is amazing. He's on. And he should be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> we should add him. I will add him and thank him for his <laughs> contribution. But it's a hell of a book. It, I'll try not to shit on all of his work. Too. It's a really good book. But it also, you know, it, it goes into why they had to make Jason X to just basically fill time with the license because it was taking mm -hmm. so long to get Freddy vs. Jason off the ground. Well, it's definitely not the last time that we have a license dispute or a, an issue with, you know, timeliness and the use of the license. I mean, just fast forward to now. They're fighting over, can they make another Friday movie? Will it be a Jason mm -hmm. movie? Will there be two parallel franchises? One of Pam and the Friday the 13th and the Doom guy. One on the other side of just Jason hacking and right. slashing. Stabby, stabby. I'm fine with either of those scenarios. Give me new movies or give me two movies. I don't care. Yo. Just don't, don't give me Jason Goes to Hell again, please. Or at least do it right. Travis is 15-year-old. <laughs> is killing the phrase stabby stabby. <laughs> he's not killing it. Like it's it. a dead horse and he's stabbing it's it. It's a dead hit, dead horse for him. <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> he was, yeah. <laughs> they were over last night for his birthday. And he's uh everything was stabby stabby. I love it. I love well, I the said, stabby uh, stabby. We were, we were cutting the cake and I made a joke to George <laughs> and I said Jem was saying get get the knife or I was like, "Oh yeah, get the knife, stabby stabby." <laughs> And he yeah. thought that was funny. He didn't really know what it was from. Yeah. And then I explained. Wait, he doesn't it was listen from. to my podcast. He hasn't yet. No. What? But he's gonna listen. He did see Halloween, so I'm probably gonna let him listen to that one. I don't want him to listen to ones that he hasn't seen the movie. Well, that's true. So he saw The Matrix and he saw Halloween. So I think you say stabby stabby in Halloween. So oh, we'll I'm see. sure I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a fan. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he thought Stabby Stabby was hilarious. He was, hilarious. He's he's he was trying it. to work it into everything he's last night. I'm like, I'm like, you're gonna, you're gonna kill it. 
beating a dead horse. It is kind mm-hmm. of ironic to s- kill Stabby Stabby. <laughs> he was stabbing a dead horse. He was stabbing a dead horse. So, so George, where do we go from here, man? What's going to happen ta- in Jason X? Is he going to fight no his idea. way out of hell? I have no idea. Is he going to start in hell, but then mysteriously just come out of hell? No, it's... No. He's like going to get into before, a guitar battle and play his way out of hell. It, it Yes. Is Freddy Krueger going to send him back to the real world to m- stuff happens and stuff? I have no idea, but whatever Eventually. it is, it's going to be unsatisfying. I, I don't, know. don't know, man. I I have renewed interest in, in X. I look forward to revisiting it next week. X is another one that I haven't seen since it came out. And I just watched it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for joining us on this remedial film class podcast fall break. Look at Jason Goes to Hell. Next, we're going to shoot into the stratosphere with Jason X. Woo boy. No, it'll be fine. I mean, this one turned out fine, so I'm sure that one's fine too, right? Right? Anyway, uh, we will see you back here for the final installment of the fall break, uh, the Jason X edition right here on your favorite podcatcher. In the meantime, you can hit us up on Twitter and Instagram at at Remedial Film Pod. You can also find us at Facebook.com slash Remedial Film Pod. And of course, you can email us at Remedial Film Pod at gmail.com. We'll see you next time for Jason X. (laughs) 